This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 2301 statics, the fall 2014 semester, exam number one. I'm going to briefly review the green version, very similar to the pink and the yellow versions. You should be able to follow along. First page had a couple of vector problems on it. First one, we were given two vectors, C and D, and we wanted to add them up vector-wise and get the resultant in part one. And so you can use Cartesian method and assume an x-axis and then a y-axis and break them up and you know enough information to figure out what the components are in those directions and then add them up that way and do the problem that way. But some of these angle things are a little bit easier with the parallelogram law. So I draw parallel lines to each vector, of each of the component vectors, and the intersection is where the resultant goes to, and that's the magnitude of the resultant. I need to know some of the things more about the angles there to solve for it. So uh, if I see, this one I had a 100 degree angle between C and D, and I can figure if that's 100 degrees, then that's 100 degrees, and then the complementary angle is the 80 degrees to that, 100 80 minus 100. So if I know that angle and I'm trying to find this force, I've got enough using the law of cosines to solve for it. From the equation sheet, this is the law of cosines. It's the cosine of 80. And I get the square root of that and I get 456.4. Second part, I wanted to know the angle between the resultant and vector C. And I use the law of sines, which is where if I know the length of sides, and then, or if I know angles, and I can uh, solve for the other angles. Uh, if I know that this resultant is 456.4, which I just solved for, and that angle is 80, the sine of that over that is equal to the sine of this angle that I want to know between C and R, and the length of this side, which is 300. This side really translated up there. Solve for the sine inverse of that number, and I get 40.3 degrees. Uh, the second part of this problem on this page was vector resolution, kind of working backwards. Given the resultant of 400 kilonewtons and two cables at these angles to it, these are the two components that make this up. Once again, I draw parallel lines to the unknown forces, line of action, through the tip of the resultant. Okay, once again, now I have to do some geometry. If I know this is 30 degrees, well, this is 30 degrees. And if that one's 30 and this one's 55, I can figure this angle from 180 minus those two, 95 degrees. Then I use the law of sines, because I know this angle and I know the length of this side, which is the resultant. Relate those two that way. Sine of 30 over this side here, T2, the sine of 55 over this side, T1. Solve for this one, these two equations, and I get T1 and T2 of those magnitudes. Law of sines is the key to this one. Let's see now, we need to go to page two and not knock things over. So this was a 2D vector problem where I've got three vectors given in different ways. This is a slope, this is an angle to a reference axis, and this one's just given to me straight in Cartesians. First one I want to know is the unit vector in the direction of L. Well, L is 100 kips, but it's also the direction. The unit vector is just going for the direction. The direction is 20 degrees from the x-axis, so the x-component, the i-component is the cosine of 20. The y-component is this opposite side, so it's the sine of 20. Here's the numbers. Let's answer D. Part 6, number 6, magnitude, which means scalar. Projection, which means dot product. Direction, which means unit vector. N dot product with U sub M. Uh, from the equation sheet, I just multiply the x's together and the y's together. Okay, the x and y of n are this negative 112 and this negative 66. That's the y. The uh, unit vector in the direction of m, 
I can see it just from these uh, the slope relationship. The x is going to be negative 5 thirteenths. The y is going to be positive up 12 thirteenths. So I plug those values in here, negative 5 thirteenths, 12 thirteenths. Do the math, I get 17.85 kips. Finally, I want the magnitude of the result and just add them all th three up. Write them out in Cartesian form like this. And I can sum those columns, get this resultant vector, take the square root of the sum of the squares, and I get 55.5 kips. Page 3 was a 3D vector problem, very similar, except this time I have a Z component to everything, or most of them. I have three vectors. This one's given Cartesians, Cartesians, and Cartesians. So I want to know first a unit vector in the direction of F2. Uh, from my equation sheet, the unit vector is made up of these components. The Fx divided by the overall magnitude, same for Y and Z. I get the overall magnitude by the square root of the sum of the squares, so for F2 it's 225 pounds. Divide all these and it simplifies to these fractions, 2 15ths I, negative 4 15ths J, 5 15ths K. Convert those into decimals and I get this answer here. The direction angles are, for once again from my equation sheet, the cosine of that angle, alpha, for the X component is just really this value over here, the fx divided by the f. So for f3, for instance, fx is 0. Remember, this is j and k. So I have to solve for the cosine inverse of 0 or 0 of 75. It's 90 degrees. Same thing for beta and gamma. It's the y component divided by the overall magnitude of 75. That's the cosine inverse of beta. Negative. And then negative 72 over 75 is the cosine inverse of gamma. So I can get beta is 106 degrees, gamma is 163.7 degrees. That was answer D on this version of the test. Number 10 is uh, similar to the one I had on the previous page. A magnitude scalar projection means dot product of F1 in the direction, which means unit vector of F2. So I'm going to use this, multiply the x's, the y's, and the z's together and add them up. For vector f1, it has these components, negative 8, 96, and 96, these numbers here. Multiply them by the x, y's, and z's of the unit vector in the direction of f2. Well, I have those up here. I use the fractions and multiply those out, and I get negative 58.67 pounds. In a related way, number 11 wants to know the angle between. Angle between means dot product. F1 and F2, well, the angle between F1 and F2 is the same as the angle between F1 and UF2. And I've already got U, F1 dotted with UF2 up here, so I just need to divide it by its magnitude. I'm rearranging the two equations from the equation sheet to get cosine of theta is the dot product divided by the magnitudes. Dot product was negative 58.67. The magnitude of F1, square root of the sum of the squares, 136. Magnitude of the unit vector is 1. Take the cosine inverse of that and I get 115.6 degrees. Number 12, the magnitude of the resultant force of F1, F2, and F3. Just add them all up. Write them up in Cartesian format. Add the columns. Take the square root of the sum of the squares of these components and I get 168.8 pounds. Page 4 is a 2D equilibrium problem. Two cables supporting a, in this case, a mass, which I need to convert to a force. That's what forces are in newtons and not kilograms. Here's a good free body diagram. I am going to get stricter on how I grade the free body diagrams, but I was pretty lenient for this one. Part 14 is cable tension AB. 15 was BC. I have two unknowns, two equations. I solve for one in terms of the other using the sum of forces in the x direction, which is zero. I have the negative three-fifths component of the x force in TAB and positive, because it's to the right, the cosine of 15 degrees times TBC. 
I can do the math and solve this for TBC is equal to this number times TAB, 0.6212. Then I can do sum of forces in the y direction, that's zero. Look at my uh, free body diagram, I have positive four fifths TAB, four fifths, and I have negative, the opposite is the sine, sine of 15 times TBC, and minus this weight, 598.4. Do the math, substitute this equation in for TBC, which is TAB times 0.6212 times the sine of 15. Combine these terms and get that 598.4 is 0.6392 TAB. Divide that by that, and I get TAB is 936 newtons. TBC is then plugged in to plug in TAB of that value into here and I get that TBC is 581.5 pounds. Makes sense that the TAB would have the bigger component since it's really the one carrying all of the uh, uh, Y force. Finally, I have a 3D equilibrium problem. Here's my free body diagram. In this case, I have three cables supporting a 400 pound weight on this version. 17, 18, 19 are just ex express the uh, unit vector, really, the tension of the cable a in AD. So I really just want the unit vector times TAD. So remember from the procedures that we've been using, I get a position vector from D to A, tail, tip, subtract the coordinates of the tip from, I mean, subtract the tail coordinates from the tip, and I get these values. For a position vector. Do all the subtraction, I get 3i minus 4j plus 10k. Okay, to convert that into a unit vector, I want to divide it by its magnitude, square root of the sum of the squares, and uh, there's the math for that, and I come up with these three components. Do the same thing for BD and CD. Position vector from D to B is this magnitude of it's this square of the sum of the squares. The unit vector looks like this. Note that it has no k component, no z component. So this vector, this cable and the vector lies in the xy plane. That'll come into play here in a second here. And this is the uh, unit vector. So that's answer A. Number 19, same thing for CD. It also lies in the xy plane. Here's my position vector square root of the sum of the squares. Here's my unit vector. I multiply those by TCD. All I've got is an I and a J component. Finally, number 20 is magnitude of the tension of the cable AD, TAD. So, neither BD nor CD has any Y, has any Z component or K component. So this, if I do a sum of forces in the Z direction, the only thing I have in the Z direction is 0.894J positive in TAD and the force itself, the weight, 400 pounds. I divide, set those equal to each other, divide by 0.8944. I get that TAD is 447.2 pounds.